I'm speaking today with Patrick Sirwell from Ericsson. Patrick, good to talk to you today. So um, Ericsson has been tracking mobile data traffic trends for some time now. Can you just give us an, an update on these trends, how they're progressing, and in fact, how Ericsson tracks these trends at all? Yes, thank you. So we've been doing this since 2011, uh, taking data from up to 100 networks in the world and trying to then to, to do forecasts for the next six years. And, and what always strikes me when I do the, the read through of the, the next Ericsson Mobilt report is the enormous uh, momentum in traffic increase. We've seen traffic going up from from uh, very low numbers up to really high numbers every time we look at the report. So uh, we expected back in 2013 that by 2019 we would have some, some 18 exabyte in the world per month. Now we're tracking at 38 exabyte per month, um, which basically is almost a doubling from what we said uh, five years ago. So how have the mobile operators been dealing with this increase in mobile traffic? Uh, from a business perspective, uh, has it always been just that they are giving mobile users more data for the same kind of pricing, or have they been able to monetize this? Yeah, over the course of the years, we, we've seen a lot of different variants of how to monetize this data. Um, there has been a lot of talk about how to introduce unlimited data. Even back in, in 2015, when, when T-Mobile in the US uh, launched something called Binge On, that was actually uh, the first start of unlimited services. And the whole traffic in the world actually grew uh, due to that. Um, and we have seen that coming in more and more. But um, we basically seen that there's still a lot to do for operators in terms of monetizing data. Um, because there's, um, there's so much you can do on, on giving away all data, um, but there is actually, uh, you're then risking giving away the upsell capability if you do that. What we see now is a lot of operators that actually are, are testing and trialing new types of models, uh, service-based models or device-based models that actually tries to monetize it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I think with 5G, there's a big chance that you actually can use that in a very compelling event. So are we seeing examples of these new models in a 4G environment and that these will be transferred to 5G? Or are we seeing them from the early 5G service providers? Uh, we're th seeing them both. There's a lot of, of trial already on 4G. Uh, we have a, uh, the last half year, we have um, double amount of operators that are testing service-based offerings on 4G. But when looking at 5G, um, there is much more bundling with new types of services uh, like uh, virtual reality or augmented reality or new offerings that are purely 5G. Even though you might be able to run them on, on 4G, on 5G they're actually charged in a different way. And in studies that we have done in Ericsson before from consumer perspective, we see an a willingness to actually pay more for 5G if you get a new service, if you get something more with it. So is this a willingness to, to pay more for incremental applications and services rather than a willingness just to pay more for a contract just because it's a 5G contract? Yes, I would say so, that the willingness is there for, from consumer perspective if you get something more and there's a lot of, of of tests and trials in, in the early 5G markets of actually putting new services available like in South Korea uh, and then the take up is actually good. If you don't offer something more it's going to be hard to actually have a premium uh, charge if it's actually the same type of service that you had before. So what do mobile operators need to do to enable the availability of these new services? I mean this is clearly something that they can't just do by themselves internally. No, you're right. And I think here is uh, what the ecosystem is there for. And also what the Ericsson right now is trying to do is to, to uh, align and leverage all the different innovations and startups and, and small companies that actually are trying to develop um, new services. 
if we can uh, help combining these with the operators, uh, there is a chance to actually offer new type of services and offer them in a different way. That you actually can maybe bundle uh, new devices with an already prepaid uh, traffic um, uh, amount of allowance in, included in them or do it in many different ways. Charge for hours of use or charge for, for certain uh, tariffs for, for certain weekends or, thing, or events like that. I think there's a lot of things that operators can do um, leveraging the ecosystem. And so for the mobile operators, or indeed the mobile market watchers believe that there isn't really much demand from users or an opportunity to make additional incremental revenues from 5G. Would you say that, that really there actually is, that if the mobile operators can collaborate well and work well with partners, that they can find these new models? Yes, when I talk to, to um, operators, what they say basically is that uh, it's probably uh, possible for, for the first couple of years in a, in a transition of a new technology to increase ARPU with early adopters. Um, but when the biggest challenge is to sustain that over time. And I think here is, is where you have the chance to actually uh, really tap into the ecosystem to do this. I mean, we have seen a 60% increase of traffic every year, the last uh, eight or 10 years. Uh, and we expect for the next five years, it's gonna be at least 30 to almost 40% increase every year. Some part of that increase in traffic is going to be new services, new value for consumers. And it should be possible to gain some of that into actual revenue. And is there a particular opportunity for mobile operators to, to drive incremental revenues and monetize traffic with enterprise, the business customers, in a different way than from the mass market users? I think sometimes we forget that, that uh, many of the consumer usage uh, services is also used by enterprises. Um, all the way from mobile broadband to, to new type of services like augmented reality and so on. And they will be for sure be used in enterprise. And, and, and many operators have a good set of customers on the enterprise side that they can leverage to also uh, provide that type of service. And there I think definitely there is an, an, an increased opportunity to do more. And finally, what advice would you give to the mobile operators who are seeking new revenue opportunities, which of course they all are, uh, what are the key things they need to take into account and what do they need to understand from the market and, and from the new business opportunities? I think the key thing is to uh, be willing to explore, be willing to test and trial new models and new offerings. In the beginning of, of a new technology era, when you maybe don't have the mass market still adopted to 5G, you can test and trial much simpler um, and bundle different things and, and make sure that you can, can, can do that and take that to market. Also, I believe that localization is going to be key here. Av ability to actually do things on your local market, uh, depending on what consumers are actually interested in. It could be everything from, from events to, to sports or even down to, to grassroots level. I think that's where, where operators can actually play a real role. And I think they should, as I said, test and trial a lot. Okay, so there's no doubt that, that identifying and finding new business opportunities from 5G is one of the main goals of the mobile operators right now. So very interesting to talk to you today, Patrick, and look forward to talking to you in the future about these trends. Thank you.